Let's clap along as we declare this song I'm casting my cares aside I'm leaving my past behind I'm setting my heart and mind on you Jesus I'm reaching my hands to yours Believing that so much more and knowing that all you have in store for me is good. Come on. It's good. Today's the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today's the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I won't worry about tomorrow I'm trusting in what you say Today's the day Declare it today Today's the day We are putting our fears aside this morning I'm putting my fears aside I'm leaving my doubts behind I'm giving my hopes and dreams to you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours, believing that so much more. Knowing that all you have in store for me is good. It's good. Today's the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made I will rejoice and be glad in it I won't worry about tomorrow I'm trusting in what you say Today is the day Today is the day Let's declare we will stand upon His truth I will stand upon your truth. I will stand upon your truth. And all my days I will live for you. All my days I will live for you. And I will stand upon your truth. And I will stand upon your truth. And all my days I will live for you. Come on, let's declare we'll stand upon His truth. And I will stand upon Your truth. And I will stand upon Your truth. And all my days I will live for You. And all my days I will live for You. I will stand upon Your truth. And I will stand upon. And all my days I'll live for you And all my days I'll live Today is the day you have made I will rejoice and be glad in it Today is the day you have made I will rejoice and be glad in it And I won't worry about tomorrow I'm giving you my fears and sorrows when you lead me, I will follow I'm trusting in what you say Today is the day Oh yeah Today is the day Oh oh Today is the day Come on, let's give God a clap offering this morning Hallelujah
向日夜在你殿中献上敬拜，定睛在你的荣美，世上一切变暗淡，除你以外，我还能有谁？Today I'll be sharing my testimony. This year has been filled with uncertainties and doubts for me, but I'm very glad that I was able to experience God through all those challenges, and I was able to learn a lot from God. One of the things I want to thank God for is when I was entering poly at the start of the year, I really didn't know what course I wanted to be in, and also I didn't have much choices because my O level results weren't that good. So when I was choosing my courses, I decided to leave it all to God, and instead of me choosing what I want to do, I let God choose what I wanted to do because I really didn't know what courses were good for me. So when I got back my results, I didn't know what to expect. I got into civil engineering. I couldn't picture myself in an engineering course, and I wanted to change my course and appeal to a design course. But as I was doing the appeal form, I remembered what I prayed to God about. I prayed that He will put me in the course that He wanted me to be in. So I just decided to enter civil engineering. When school first started, I was really struggling because there were a lot of math modules, and I'm not very good at math. And for the mid semester tests, I did really badly, but. I'm really thankful that God has blessed me with very good classmates. They have blessed me with very patient teachers, and they actually have helped me a lot. My friends really make sure that I understood everything. And for my end of year semester tests, I was able to ask my modules. This made me realize that 
even though I was in a place that I least expected myself to be in, I was able to see God's miracles and experience Him through the challenges that I've been through and also see that the people that He has blessed me with and I really thank God for the people around me I really thank God that I was able to get closer to Him through those challenges. Another thing that I'm really grateful for this year was being able to learn how to cycle. So during the holidays, the youth planned to go to the Yellow Ribbon Challenge. So we were supposed to cycle for 60 kilometers, and they put my name in without knowing that I wasn't I wasn't able to cycle. But thank God, with their help and with God's strength, I was able to learn how to cycle within two weeks. It was really unexpected for me because I learned things really slowly and through that time when I was learning how to cycle I was really scared and uncertain because you were going to the road to East Coast Park to cycle and there's a lot of people and I was really scared that I would bring the group down and I was really scared that I couldn't do it but I really thank God that he has protected all of us even though this challenge seems so impossible for us and we have went through a lot of uncertainties like some of us got injured, some of us uh, the tire punctured <laughs> but we learned to put our complete trust in God that He will protect us and He will help us and even though we've gone through a lot I thank God that He has always been there for us throughout this whole challenge and that we were able to finish the challenge together. Another thing that I'm thankful for this year is being able to find a good part-time job because uh, last year I had a really bad part-time job experience at an F&B outlet. So this year I prayed to God and asked God to give me a good part-time job and I got into Uniqlo and I thank God that the people there and the environment there is really good. I really thank God that He has given me a lot of opportunities this year and He has also blessed me with a lot of good friends. And even though it was filled with uncertainties and I had to step out of my comfort zone a lot of times, but I really thank God that I was able to learn how to fully trust in Him at times that are really difficult. One of the verses that has really spoken to me this year is Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This made me realize that even though things seem so unexpected and things don't go according to our plan, we always know that God's plan is the best for us and whatever that He has prepared for us will bring us closer to Him and will lead us to a better relationship with Him in the future that we should just let God lead our life and we should just follow Him. In whatever that we do, we should let God lead us so that we can be able to live out the plans that He has prepared for us. I thank God that I can be able to share some of my testimonies for this year to all of you and I would really love to hear all your testimonies too. And I just want to thank God for everything that has happened this year and I've learned a lot. And Thank you for listening. <laughs> Bye. Chinese的弟兄姐妹们平安 我们绝大部分的崇拜都是实体的，感谢神，感谢这段期间服侍的弟兄姐妹。因着神的缘故，全然的摆上与付出。每次都准时的出现在教会服侍众人，五位慈献上感谢。虽然二零二一年也是处于
在 YWCA 两天一夜的营会，让我有机会和我们的长职委员会有更深的认识。营会之后，我们便成立了周间分享的事工。同时也发现，我们的执事委员们对于灵修的分享是如此的精彩和感动。当然，最感恩的应该就是五月和七月，我们有人受洗，真是大大感谢神。我制作了一个短的影片，让我们一起回顾及感恩。真是感谢神。以弗所书五章四节这么说：“言辞、妄语和嬉笑的话都不相宜，总要说感谢的话。”铁沙罗尼加前书五章十八节也这么说：“凡事谢恩，因为这是神在基督耶稣里向你们所定的旨意。”有个寓言故事这么说。有一个老魔鬼，他一辈子都作恶多端。他在退休前夕，想要把他以往对付人类的各种武器呢，就进行清仓大拍卖。拍卖的武器陈列出来，十分的引人注目，有恶毒、猜忌、狡诈、嫉妒、憎恨、虚伪、说谎、贪婪以及懒惰等等。每一件都标上了价格，但是有一件成就不堪的武器，价格却远远高过其他武器。这是什么玩意儿？有个人好奇的指着这个东西问道：“那是沮丧。”老魔鬼答道：“它的标价为什么那么高？”那人继续问。老魔鬼说。因为它比其他武器都来得有效。当其他的武器无法让我占据一个人的心灵时，就用它来撬开并进入那个人的心灵。一旦进去后，就能随心所欲驾驭这个人了。停顿了一下，老魔鬼又说：“不过，它却对少数人无效。”有哪些人你用不上呢？那人不死心的追问。老魔鬼迟疑了好一会儿，才低声说道：“那些心存感谢的人。”弟兄姐妹，若我们时常在祷告中向神献上感谢，在生活中向人说感谢的话。就能保守自己的心思意念，抵挡恶者的攻击。我相信，借着感恩
相信靠着主所加添的大能大力，我们也必能改变自己的眼光，改变身旁的环境。让我们这个时刻就单单以感谢的祷告来到主的宝座前，为着我们个人、教会以及新加坡来感恩。首先。我们为自己来做感恩的祷告。现在，让我们以心灵和诚实来到神的面前，跟神说：“爱我们的父神，感谢你，借着耶稣基督的宝血救赎了我。你是全能全知的神，除你以外别无他神。你深知我的心思意念。”你擦干我的眼泪，你将我拥抱在你的怀里，安慰我。你用大门的膀臂护卫我，赐我力量。你如鹰展翅，将我背在你的背上，使我的灵得以自由。感谢你，拥有你，我已满足。祷告，奉耶稣基督宝贵的名，阿门。接下来，我们要为复兴堂向神献上感恩的祷告。爱我们的父神，感谢你的看顾与保守。尽管过去我们教会经历了许多的风雨，然而神的爱始终在我们教会彰显。尽管面对疫情的挑战，神仍赐给我们教会有忠心的弟兄姐妹们。因着神的爱，合一团契，尽心服侍，我们献上感恩。愿爱我们的神继续赐福我们教会。祷告奉耶稣基督的名，阿门。最后，我们为新加坡感恩。我们在天上的父。我们为着新加坡向你献上感谢，感谢你赐给我们有才能、有智慧的政府，在疫情期间带领着人民齐心抗疫，保守着人民的健康及经济的稳定。为着新加坡有良好的医疗设备，感恩，让死亡率处于低水平状态。我们感谢神，祷告奉耶稣的名，阿门。弟兄姐妹，让我们操练，时刻都怀有一颗感恩的心。愿主赐福大家。你是我的主，引我走这一路，高山或低谷，都是。在保护万人中唯独，你爱我，认识我，永远不变的一许，这一生都是祝福。你是我的主，引我走这一路，高山或低谷，都是你在保护，万人中唯独，你爱我，认识我，永远不变的一许。这一生都是。
祝福。Sharing my testimony tonight, yeah. So, uh, I just want to um just uh thank God for everything that He's done for me this year. Um, a lot of it ha- has happened, and I've been through a lot. But I really thank God for bringing me through, and really um teaching me a lot through a lot of uh the things that I've experienced. And um, like for the start of the at the start of the year, I've actually like graduated in in this year, and uh, I had quite a bit of um uh, difficulty uh when it came to uh doing projects and schoolwork, um, and I just uh you know I I really thank God for you know bringing me through, and I cannot believe that like three years has passed so quickly, and like I've already like graduated, so that. That has been like quite an interesting uh thing to experience, yeah. And uh, I thank God for really bringing me through because I, I wasn't really sure or like able to see that like uh what will happen after I graduated, and I was really afraid that I'll have trouble graduating because uh, I, I experienced quite a lot of things while I was still in school. And I also thank God, uh, for protecting my family. Uh, actually, at the start of the year, I was really, really concerned because I experienced some like, uh, like my family uh, members were not very well, and I've experienced my grandparents and even my own parents uh injuring themselves, and uh, it, it caused a lot of worry for me, and I started to de- develop uh, <laughs> a lot of fear. And a lot of anxiety whenever I think about my family members, and I had a lot of trouble sleeping because I was very afraid uh, of what might happen to them, especially when I'm not able to actually be there to watch them. And um, I thank God that it, even throughout all of my fears and uh, my anxieties, like He really brought me and my family through all the hardships that we have experienced, and that He has fully. You know, he has healed my my family members, and like uh, throughout the year, I I really thank God for um giving us like of uh, my me and my family a peace of mind, and that um you know he really protected my family, so like I'm really grateful for that. Yeah, and I also want to thank God uh for my own personal uh, uh my my own life that uh even though I tried to. Uh, apply for university right after graduating, and it didn't go very smoothly. But I still thank God that uh, even though it was not in um in in the right timing for me to enter uni, I thank God for the continuous uh, opportunities that He has given me to actually uh work and try out some things that I've never done before, like in my current job, and um yeah my. 
like and I felt that like um I'm really just trying things out because like, I'm still pretty young and I don't really know what I want to do in the future so like I thank God for uh, really opening up all these doors for me and I just hope that like in the coming year even as I you know, try to apply for uni again I hope that God would really uh show me what he has in store for me and um that he'll just lead me and I'll be able to figure out you know maybe what I would like to do in the future yeah and I yeah that's just like my testimony for the year and I just like thank God for everything that he's done for me yeah so how will you remember 2021 the COVID situation is still with us and it will continue to be as we try and get out and get going with life at church 2021 we we took steps to knowing god mostly from the pulpit ministry now why do we want to know god the obvious answer is that he is the god we worship but there is more now, jeremiah tells us that god has ancient paths his ways for us to walk on ways to journey in life especially in unsettling times such as this jeremiah in uh, chapter 6 verse 16 records what God says to Israel. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. There is one good way, my dear friends, that God has for us to walk in to find rest for our souls in times of storms and uncertainty. The pursuit of God is to know His way to live and His way to rest. Jesus told us in Matthew 11, Come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest to my yoke. Take upon yourself and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Knowing God, Coming to Him allows us to learn about Him and learn from Him, to know how to trust Him, to rest in Him. And yes, I can think of one more reason to knowing God, although there are many more. I just want to highlight one more. Would you believe me if I say that we are defined by the relationships that we carry and we have more than anything else? Relationships tell us who we are, and whose we are. Let's look at three characters in the Bible. In Genesis 6, Noah was defined by who he wasn't. He wasn't one who was unfaithful to God. In verse 8, it says that Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. In verse 9, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. This walking faithfully with God allowed him to have that righteousness with God. Noah had built relationship with God. He knew God more than just in his head. He walked faithfully with God. That phrase gives us the image that there was this great intimacy between God and Noah. First Samuel chapter 15, David, he was not defined by the person he replaced. He was not like Saul. David was a man after God's own heart. He was worshipping God. He sung to God. He wrote for God. It was always about God. In John 18, Peter was defined by whom he followed. That brash man who was ill-tempered was, begin, was changed by Jesus. God began to temper, to change him by his grace. Acts 2 bears us witness to this transformation. It is not about our academic achievements, it's not about our wealth, nor about the failures we have had. We can't go anywhere without acknowledging that who we are and whom we belong to is defined by who we spend time with and who we build relations with. The only relationship that truly defines us is our relationship with God. From this relationship, is how we live our lives, how we think, how we feel, what are our desires, what guides us, what are the values that leads us, how in all circumstances we can have faith and we can trust Him. 
in this relationship, our worth is also defined not by ourselves, our what we have done or not done, but by God. You are worth it all. The effort to make this world, God made this world for men. You are worth the sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ, and the cross. You are worth the, the effort put in to produce the Bible. You are worth His coming again. You are valuable because God says so. That's that's the relationship. What happens with our relationship? That this value defines us above all else. And most of all, God calls you and I, His children, His son, His daughter, and cares for us daily. One other thing I must share with you all, our relationship with God should also define how we see others, the people that God brings to our lives. We should see the rest of the world as God does. The people we come across each day, they are also loved by God and can also love God, can serve Him, at the same time also can live eternally with Him right alongside with us. So the relationship we build from knowing God that encompasses His love, His righteousness, His grace, His mercy, His patience, His peace, and so much more of Him must also be what we bring into the relationships we build with others. Did not Jesus tell us to love our neighbours as ourselves? A relationship with others outside of God's love, outside of knowing God, makes this world quite unbearable. I often say our relationship with God is a re- it's reflected in our relationship with men. If we do not know God, if we fail to pursue after Him, we run the risk, this great risk of missing His best for us, the good way which He gives, which gives us peace to our soul. Jeremiah 6.16 really ends with these words, where God says to Israel, but you said, you will not walk, we will not walk in it. God has offered Israel his way and they chose not to walk, not to journey with him. That was the folly of Israel. Knowing God only ends when Jesus returns to establish the new heaven and the new earth. I think that's going to be some time away. So let us continue in this journey of knowing God. Walk the good way and find rest in God. Let me wish you all a blessed 2022 filled with God's goodness, grace and peace. You are beautiful beyond description To marvelous for words To wonderful for comprehension Like nothing ever seen or heard Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom your depths of your life? You are beautiful beyond description Majesty and throne above And I stand, I stand in awe of you I stand, I stand in awe of you Holy God to whom all praise beautiful beyond description to marvelous for words to wonderful for comprehension like nothing ever seen or heard 
your infinite wisdom who can fathom the depths of your love you are beautiful beyond description majesty and throne above and I stand I stand in awe of you I stand I stand in awe of you holy God to whom all praise is due I stand in awe of you and I stand I stand I stand, I stand in awe of you, holy God, to whom all praise is due, stand in awe of you, I stand in awe of you, Lord, I stand of you well, Welcome Church to Watch Night Service 2021 This will be the last sharing for the year Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. For most of 2020 to 2021, we lived in the shadow of COVID-19. Governments, businesses and individuals have been sorely challenged by the pain of disruption and loss. While some may have flourished in the lockdowns, most find themselves pining for things to return to the way they were. This year has been more devastating for small businesses because of the new strains of COVID, Delta and Omicron variants. And we don't know what will be coming down the years ahead. Well, like it or not, if you have read reports, we'll know that this has brought forth many personal challenges to our emotional and mental health of finances. You know, more people are getting depressed and they are recorded more suicide cases. And there's the lack of face-to-face -face interaction for the young and old. And to make things worse, we now have plenty of people who are digital addicts. Now, Mr. Zuckerberg wants to introduce more digital advancement with Metaverse, encouraging us to live and connect more in the virtual worlds. Frankly, I think it will lead to destruction of socializing for the human race. Most will live in a virtual bubble reality and not in the real world. Basically, fellowship as we know it will be gone. And it's a very sad thing, as we are told in Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Church physical fellowship is an important aspect in our Christian life. Many people now are also working from home and not in their physical office. Many Christians have also been attending church virtually. People are now so comfortable working from home and they're attending virtual churches that I think this will be a feature for years to come. Will they go back to their offices to work or will they go back to church to attend physical worship services? No, I have read and heard comments from some church leaders that maybe after COVID eases, when COVID is over, there may be quite a lot of members who may not be going back to church. This is just not local church issues, but all over the world. And what does it mean for churches then? Especially small churches. If this really happens, then churches all over the world may have only a remnant left. 
What does this mean for Revival Sense Church? Is God doing something all over the world before He's coming? Are we afraid that the numbers in Revival Center Church will decrease and there will be none to carry out the work of God? You know, sometimes I must admit, I'm one of those. As I see the demographics in Revival Center Church, that there are many more seniors than young people in these three services. Then the Lord reminded me of a story in the Bible, in Kings, 1 Kings chapter 19, whereby Elijah, after defeating the, the priest of Baal, ran away when he heard that the high priestess Jezebel was looking for him to destroy him. Elijah, for some reason, ran away. And then he told the Lord that they are all out to get him and there was none left to fight for him. Elijah thought the nation of Israel had totally departed from God. But God told him in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18, that he had left for himself 7,000 people who would serve and honor him. Those 7,000 were God's remnant. There was hope. God always has a remnant left. God always provides hope, not despair for his people. God always has the last say. Elijah was not alone. Church, my question to you on this last day of 2021 is this. Are you part of God's remnant in Revival Center Church in the last days? Will you want to be part of the remnant if you are, I'm very sure you God will work. God will work with you and through you. But you need to decide what kind of Christian you want to be in 2020 and beyond. Will you join God in the season of the last days? There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, Ecclesiastes says. Church, the time is now, and this is the season. God has given us. Let's join God in His adventure in these last days. And church, there are three great virtues of God. Faith, hope, and love. And all these three play a big part in our walk with our God. Will you choose to be God's remnant in 2022 and beyond? Church, I always pray for Revival Center Church that the love of our Father God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless. Good night. How do I speak with tongue of men and of angels? And do I prophesy and understand all? How do I have a faith? So mountains may be removed And though I feed the poor And gave up my life If I have not charity If love does not flow from me I am nothing Jesus reduced me to love Love is patient and kind Love is not envious Not proud but gentle and mean it's not its own way Love 
sins when Jesus prevailed Believes and endure all things Love hopes and bears every wrong And love never fails If I have not charity if love does not flow from me, I am nothing. Jesus reduced me to love. One season I was a child. I spoke and I thought like a child. Be a man, such ways put aside. Though now we see through a glass, yet then we'll see face to face. Now, by the faith, hope, and love. The greatest is love If I have not charity If love does not flow from me I am nothing Jesus reduced me to me to love, Jesus reduced me to
Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When through the world and forest glades I wander And hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees When I look down From lofty mountain grandeur And hear the brook And feel the gentle breeze Then sings my soul my Savior God to Thee How great Thou art How great Thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee How great Thou art How great Thou art That God, His Son not sparing, sent Him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on a cross, my burdens gladly bearing, He bled and died. 
to take away my sin Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee How great Thou art, how great Thou art Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee how great Thou art, how great Thou art. And when Christ shall come, with shout of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow. In humble adoration And there proclaim My God, how great Thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee How great Thou art How great Thou art Then sings my soul Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art.